Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Tarshan Mehta. If you're looking at what happened with the global markets, uh, uh, the US markets did manage to end lower, but they were slightly flat in trade. The European markets also ended lower. And the traction in the Asian markets is not good at this point of time. Nikkei is down almost 1.5%. The Hong Kong markets are down in trade. Uh, so most of the Asian markets are trading with a slight negative bias. Uh, how did the ADRs pan out in trade? ICICI Bank was a big gainer. It was up 2%. Bipro reacted to its numbers was up one and a half percent and Infos is continuing the good run because of the more rupee move that we've had here was up over one percent what didn't do well <coughs> in trade was uh, Tata Motors and Vedanta which continued to bleed in trade now the SX Nifty is indicating a very very flat opening it was up almost 35 points at one point of time but has managed to cool off from the highs of the day so that's the trend currently that we're seeing now as far as uh, the Nifty is concerned the Nifty was up half a percent but outperformance was seen on the mid cap and small cap end of the market even if you're looking at the Nifty Bank, the Nifty PSU Bank, traction was very, very positive. What's been doing well over the past few days is basically the Nifty Pharma and the Nifty IT Index. They gained on Friday, given how the rupee had panned out in trade. And the Real Estate Index seems to be making a little bit of comeback. It was up over 1% in trade. How has this month panned out for trade? Uh, it's up 10%. The Energy Index is up almost 10% this month. IT Index is up 5% and the Sensex is up 3% in trade. And the Energy Index is led mainly on account of Reliance. Uh, real Estate, Media and Metal, Metal is down almost 10% this month. There's severe weakness on commodity prices across the world. So that is weakness. How did last week pan out in trade? You had the Energy Index, which was up 1.7% led by Reliance and the oil marketing companies. PSU Banks gained and the IT Index gained. But look at the cuts that came in even on the Metal Index last week. 6% uh, down. The Pharma Index was down 2.5% and the Real Estate Index was down 3.5%. So some of the sectors are seeing a lot of weakness that are coming in. Stocks at record highs, Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finserv, Reliance Industries and Ju Jubilant Foodworks. Uh, the list is uh, much wider on the 52-week low, but we've taken some of them, notables ones being Hindalco, Power Grid, and Hero Motor Corp. They are the nifty companies, rather, rather large companies like Cadilla, Advance Enzyme, uh, India Bulls Real Estate also feature among this list. As far as uh, the fund flows are concerned, FIs were net buyers to the tune of 310 crores. DIs are sellers this month. FIs have bought in almost uh, close to a billion dollars in this month itself in this market. <coughs> now, if you're looking at the Nifty contribution, Reliance and Infosys were the main reason why the Nifty managed to rally in trade. Bajaj Finance at record highs also contributing. Bajaj Auto was the big disappointment as far as earnings is concerned. It contributed a 10-point downtick and HD, HDFC didn't contribute. HDFC bank numbers were disappointing, so probably will react in trade today. Now, as far as the, uh, as far as the FNO market is concerned, FIs, uh, uh, if you're looking at uh, what happened with the Nifty, uh, open interest built up of 1% on the long side for the Nifty. Uh, there was short covering that was seen on the Nifty Bank. Open interest was down almost 1.4% in trade. Now, uh, where are positions taken? This is the total open interest. So, call writers are active from levels of 11,000 to higher levels and put writers are active from 11,000 to lower levels. So, pretty much in and around the 11,000 mark is where most of the action will be and the broad range is 10,900 to 11,100. Now, if looking at what happened on Friday, put writers were aggressive at the 10,900 and the 11,000 mark. Call writers were forced to cut positions at the 11,000 level since the Nifty did manage to rally above the 11,000 mark in trade. PC, if you're looking at uh, the stocks in the FNO band, Adani Power and Adani Enterprises continue to be uh, remain in the FNO band. PCR for the Nifty moved up slightly. The Nifty Bank PCR remained unchanged at this point of time. Couple of stocks that I uh, want to bring to your notice. First of all, PC Jewelers. Short covering was seen. Open interest build up was down 5% in trade. The other counter we spoke about was Indian Bank, which saw fresh shots on open interest build up of 20%. Uh, you had uh, counters like Bajaj Auto, which reacted ra rather negatively to the numbers. Open interest build up was 3%. And finally, the last counter was Bajaj Finance at record highs. Open interest build up of 5% on the long side. But uh, that's the scene that we saw on the domestic market. But let's go across to Paul Allen for all the top international headlines. One of Japan's most senior policymakers says the government will continue to resist American efforts to negotiate a bilateral free trade agreement. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said Japan will not do anything that could harm the national interest. He said Japan will continue to insist that the U.S. returning to the Trans-Pacific Partnership is in the best interests of both countries. 
The new president of Mexico is calling on President Trump to embrace fresh NAFTA talks and aim for a final deal that includes all three countries. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador says the three sides should work together on a range of issues, including trade, migration and security. He added the prolonged uncertainty about a new NAFTA deal could harm investment in the medium and long term. The UK's new Brexit chief says the country must prepare for a no-deal Brexit. Dominic Raab told the BBC that while he doesn't think such a scenario will happen, a responsible government should plan for every outcome. He earlier told the Sunday Telegraph the UK will refuse to pay the $50 billion EU divorce bill if the bloc fails to agree a deal. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. On to Nigeri markets. Stock of the day is Bagaria Industries on back of a good set of numbers reported by the company. Revenue has seen a sharp uptick, uh, as much as 10% for this counter, 37% for this counter at a number of around 113 odd crore as compared to 82 crore figure that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. Also, if you look at the EBITDA performance, we're seeing a 2.5%, 2.5 times jump there at a number of 30 crore as compared to 12 crore. Margins too have expanded for the company. Uh, we're looking at a number of 27% as compared to 14.5% in the corresponding quarter and the profitability for this company has risen by more than 250% at a number of 17.8 crore as compared to 5 crore in the June quarter of the previous year. What goes behind the making of these numbers for the chemical manufacturing company with a market capitalization of around 600 crore is clearly the cost optimization measures and the high revenue. Raw material costs as a percent year net sales, that figure has dropped to 59% as compared to 68%. Also, we're seeing a sharp uptick in other expenses. Besides that, lower tax expenses also registered by the company along with the lower depreciation has aided the bottom line performance of the company. If you look at the tax expenses, that as a percent to your uh, profit before tax uh, stood at 29% in this quarter as compared to nearly 34% that we saw in the previous quarter. However, other income of this company has slid by as much as 46% to an extent weighing down on the bottom line performance of the company. However, look, let's look at the segmental breakup for this company in terms of the revenue. We're looking at an uptick of nearly 20, uh, a number of 21% for chemical business to a number of around 104 odd crore, which is a percent to your net sales from nearly 92%. And also, if you look at the power business, that's shot up by 30, uh, 300. That's a huge jump that we're looking at a number of around 9 crore as compared to nearly 2 crore that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. Now, solar power business as your overall revenue, it forms an 8% of your overall revenues. If you look at the EBIT performance of the company, we're looking at a sharp uptick coming from the solar power business, which has actually turned around from a loss to a profit situation. And However, if you look at the chemical business, it's more than a 100% jump. Now, do bear in mind the fact that chemical business almost contributes to 90% of the company's overall revenue. Sharp uptick there, uh, a lot loss to profit situation for solar power definitely has gone down well for the company. Let's shift focus to currency and commodity space. Uh, talking about Indian rupee first, it recovered from its all-time low of 69.13 levels on Friday and ended 20 paise higher at 68.85 levels against the dollar. Now, if you see for the week, the rupee has depreciated almost half a percent or close to 33 paise versus the greenback. Well, speaking of the bond market, sovereign bonds declined on Friday. That was a marginal decline there as 10-year uh, benchmark bond yield ended steady near 7.5%. 78%. Well, in terms of flows into debt market, Global Fund uh, increased their rupee debt holdings on Friday. They infused close to 1250 crores, according to NSDL data. Well, on the global front, uh, dollar index dropped uh, 7 tenths of a percent uh, on Friday, which is most in four months after US President Trump accused China and European Union as currency manipulators. And hence, euro and pound both gained in trade uh, versus the dollar on Friday itself. They were up about uh, almost 8 tenths of a percent percent higher versus the dollar uh, 
on the global front, investors will do keep an eye on European Central Bank policy meet, which is scheduled for this uh, week on Thursday. And lastly, speaking of dollar rupee, now it is trading at 68.74 levels against the dollar in the non-deliverable forward market, which indicates a positive opening for Indian rupee in today's trade. Well, having said that, let's shift focus to commodity space. Uh, good morning, Jayesh. What cues are you picking up today? Morning, Saloni. Let me start off with the oil prices, which are currently trading a tad bit soft, uh, but on Friday did manage to see an uptake. Uh, however, if you look at the weekly basis, uh, we saw WTI, which ended uh, lower for the third straight week. Now, all of this is on the back of decreased activity in the drilling space uh, in the United States. Uh, so we understand that Baker Hughes has reported uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, working oil rigs uh, that have dropped by five to nearly 858 for last week. But moving on to the base metal space, uh, that too was under pressure. However, on Friday, we saw the LME base metal index uh, make a rebound and ended about 1% higher, but has now extended the weekly route to about six weeks in a row, which is the long longest uh, weekly losing streak for the index since 2015. As far as individual base metal prices are concerned, we had aluminium, copper, zinc and nickel which gained more than 1% each, while we had lead which closed uh, higher by nearly 1% and tin was the only base metal to close negative, uh, but uh, that too ended uh, flat in trade. Now if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, uh, the base metals have in fact uh, uh, you know, started on a strong note and extended the morning uh, gain as well. So you have copper, zinc and aluminium which are trading more, about 1% higher and you have Shanghai Steel which is trading about 7 tenths in the green as well. Uh, lastly, the gold prices are still trading near the 52-week low but have inched up a tad bit uh, towards the 1230 mark now. Well, amongst the stocks uh, that we're tracking in trade uh, today include a host of companies which reported numbers after market hours on Friday and over the weekend, starting off with Bata, which reported a strong set of numbers, revenue growth of 7%, a net profit growth of a much higher 36%. Even uh, if you look at the operational performance, we did see the margins expand by 350 basis points. Uh, next on the list is Just Dial. Again, strong uh, numbers, 11.3% is the revenue growth. Operationally, the performance was much better with a 77 percent growth in the uh, EBITDA numbers. EBITDA margins also expanded from 17 percent to 27 percent. However, uh, the net profit growth was restricted to 1 percent on account of lower other income and higher tax outgo. That apart, uh, they've also approved a buyback with the buyback price fixed at 800 per share. So we'll see the stock uh, react to uh, these numbers as well as this development. That apart, we also had strong set of numbers coming in uh, from Bhageria Industries, which Nikki has now spoken about. So I'm going to skip this one and move on to the next one on the list, which is uh, Shisha Shai Papers. You have a revenue growth of 9%, EBITDA growth of 18.7%. Even in terms of the margins, you saw a 50 basis points expansion and PAD growth was in line with 23% expansion. So good num set of numbers coming in there. LNT Finance, uh, this is the first quarter where they reported uh, numbers based on in AS, but uh, you did see pad growth of about 59 percent and the gross NPA uh, rise uh, or come down sorry on a year on year basis to 7.93 percent even as far as the AUM growth was concerned uh, that remains strong at about um, 27 percent that's in their focus lending business Next on the list is uh, MCX, a revenue growth of 24%. However, net profit growth declined 77%, but that was largely on account of an exceptional loss of 24 crores during the quarter. But otherwise, as far as the operational performance was concerned, it was good where EBITDA doubled to 26 crores. On the other hand, we saw some sort of disappointment as far as South Indian Bank is concerned. A revenue, um, a net interest income growth of 7%, but the net profit declined by 77% on account of uh, a lower other income, but even as the uh, asset quality numbers are concerned, gross NPA spiked from 3.6% to 4.5%. And you also saw a slightly uh, disappointing set of numbers coming in from Reliance Powers, where revenues declined by 13%, net profit grew by about a muted 2%, and EBITDA also came in lower by about 6%. Uh, so those are some of the stocks that you need to keep track of. The GST Council has taken many important decisions in its meeting on Saturday, ranging from rate reductions on about 50 items, having a simplified return filing framework and giving relief to the textile and hotel industry. 
the GST Council has further pruned the 28% tax slab by reducing rates on washing machines, refrigerators, vacuum cleaners from 28% to 18% and reducing GST on ethanol from ethanol sold to oil marketing companies from 18% to 5% and has exempted sanitary napkins from GST. These rate reductions will come into effect from July 27 and the revenue implication of moving items that were taxed at 28% earlier to 18% now will be about 6,000 crore rupees according to Assam Finance Minister Mr. Himanta Biswasarma. The GST Council has also decided that taxpayers with, up, with annual turnover up to 5 crore rupees will be able to opt for filing quarterly returns while they'll have to pay their taxes monthly. These taxpayers will have two simplified returns which will be different from the regular GST returns and will have lesser information to be filled on these two simplified returns. The GST Council has also given relief to the textile industry by giving refund of the input tax credit that the, that the textile industry was not eligible to claim earlier. As far as the hotel industry is concerned, the GST Council has decided that GST would be levied on the actual transaction value and not the declared tariff by these hotels as was the practice earlier. All right, HDFC Bank reported numbers on Saturday, and I'm going to summarize the numbers in five key pointers. Uh, the net interest income growth came in at 15.5%, which was a multi-quarter low. That's on account of the net interest margins are seeing a decline of about 10 basis points. That apart, uh, when it comes to the net profit growth, that fell to sub-20%, uh, thereby missing analyst estimates. It was also the slowest growth in five quarters. Uh, why did that happen? It was largely on account of... Uh, the bank recognizing an MTM loss on their uh, investment portfolio uh, at about 391 crores. So they've recognized the profit, uh, the loss upfront instead of spreading it over a four quarter period as allowed by RBI. Uh, when it comes to business momentum, uh, the loan growth continued to remain healthy. Above industry average at 21.9%. Uh, once again, retail book growth was driven largely by uh, unsecured loans. Uh, the good news is that corporate loan uh, book did see some. Uh, uh, you know, rebound or bounce back. Uh, it had come in at 9.4%, uh, you know, in the March quarter, and that has moved back to a double digit growth of 22.7% in this quarter. And finally, when it comes to the asset quality numbers, the gross NPA ratio inched up marginally by three basis points to 1.33%. Uh, that also largely had to do with a spike as far as uh, agri slippages are concerned, uh, something that the management had warned about earlier in the fourth quarter. They had also guided for a broad NPA uh, ratio range of 1.3 to 1.5 percent. So we did see the gross NPA ratio trend a little higher. But overall, uh, while it was a miss on the bottom line on account of that, uh, you know, MTM hit, uh, the core operating metrics otherwise seem to remain steady. So largely uh, in line quarter except for the bottom line miss. Well, it was uh, largely in line for Wipro's earnings uh, as far as the first quarter is concerned, perhaps uh, slightly higher than consensus expectations when it comes to its top line, starting off with its revenues, which came up as much as 3.4% quarter on quarter at a little over 14,230-odd crores. Uh, we've also seen an expansion in margins around 15.8% as against 13.7%. And net profit consequently rose 16% at around 2,094 crores. IT service revenues were down by as much as 1.7% at around uh, $2,026 million, higher than the Bloomberg Quint mean of $2,018 million. Now, among other factors, and when it comes to his guidance, the guidance was given uh, has indicated a sequential growth of around 0.3% to 2.3% and a range of 200, uh, $2,009 million and $2,049 million. And this is higher than the Bloomberg Quint expectations of around minus 0.5% and plus 1.5%. We must remember that there has been an expansion in margins essentially because of the fact that the company had taken some provisioning in the previous quarter owing to one of his clients uh, were bang, uh, uh, you know, filing for bankruptcy. And that's the reason why we are seeing that expansion in margins. Of course, uh, we've also seen wage hikes play against margins in this case. Uh, not to forget the, uh, the currency tailwinds also coming into effect if, as far as these mid margins go. On the whole, it's been a steady quarter for Wipro, largely in line with expectations. And it is the same for uh, the guidance going ahead for the second quarter. 
We're now expecting great set of numbers coming in from ACC. We're looking at an uptick of nearly 10% on top line front for this counter at a number from 3,650 or 54 crore as compared to 3,300 crore in the corresponding quarter. EBITDA is expected to slip as much as 24% to 480 crore as compared to 635 crore in the corresponding quarters. Margins are expected to shrink uh, at 13% as compared to 19 crore in the corresponding quarter. We're looking at a downtick of nearly 26% in the profitability of the company to a number of a 240 crore as compared to 322 crore in the corresponding quarter. Other parameters that we'll keep an eye out will be first uh, volume figure which is expected to stand at 7.8 million ton as compared to 7.1 million ton, 11 million ton that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. Also we're expecting uh, EBITDA per ton which is an important metric for the company to decline as much as 28% to a number of around 670 78 rupees as compared to nearly 943 rupees that we saw in the corresponding quarter. Realization, however, is expected to be muted or up by as much as 5% to a number of 5,160 rupees per ton. What goes behind the waking of this number? As well, to begin with, I'm going to start off by telling that the growth is expected to be below the industry standard level. And also, this is on account of uh, the lower capacity utilization level along with commissioning of new uh, facility by Sri Cement, which is expected to weigh down on the ECC's volume. Also, besides that, we're looking at a higher input cost, nearly 20% rise coming in from the power and fuel segment here on your basis. Uh, margins are also expected to decline due to other higher expenses. Muted realizations remain to be the story of most of the cement company due to the weak pricing, re uh, weak pricing power across the region for most of these companies. Costs are expected to outgrow realization, thereby weighing on the margin profile of the company all right from earnings to everything else in the world of business you'll find all of that and more on Bloomberg Quint live over the course of the day you'll also find several stories on the website bloombergquint.com if you lo do log on right now among them here are just a couple of stories the world's top finance chiefs on Sunday warned that trade tensions threaten global growth as the engines of leading economies fall out of sync Global growth remains robust and many emerging market countries are better prepared to face crises, but risks to the world economy have increased. That's according to finance ministers and central bankers from the group of 20 nations who said this at the end of their summit in Buenos Aires over the weekend. An industry body, ASOCHAM, has claimed that corporate India is becoming more vulnerable to sudden policy change risks emanating at both the central and state levels. It also recommended that any amendment in rules should involve stakeholders' consultation before being pronounced. That's all you need to know going into trade today. And it's going to be a busy one, so do stay tuned. Up next on Bloomberg Quint Live is Indian Open. Thanks for watching.